carrier, the Antietam. Every conventional carrier the United States has built since the Antietam was converted in 1952 has had an angled flight deck. But countries like Thailand, Brazil, and the United Kingdom operate carriers that are too small to incorporate an angled flight deck. In 1980, British designers came up with a brilliant short deck launch system they called the Ski Jump. This aircraft carrier's got a ski jump in order to allow us to use the deck area much more effectively than we would do if it was just a flat deck. Uh, it gives us the chance to launch the jets from shorter distances or with more weight or, generally speaking, both. Here, on HMS Ark Royal, sea harriers take off from the ski jump in the same way the motocross rider takes off from the ramp. At low speed, the aircraft and the motorbike have the same problem in that they can't fly. But if we put a jump in front of the motorbike, you can achieve flight. However, unlike the Harrier, the motorbike has to come down. But how does the ski jump help the aircraft reach flying speed? The ski jump basically allows you to, to generate a ballistic throw, if you like, into the air before the aircraft is wingborne, i.e. using its aerodynamic uh, qualities to, uh, to, to generate lift. What we're doing is having ballistic lift until we get to that point there and we have enough wingborne lift now because the air aircraft can continue to accelerate and now we can fly the aircraft away conventionally. Without the ski jump, the Royal Navy couldn't operate fixed-wing aircraft from its carriers. The Sea Harrier lands vertically, but it can't take off vertically, carrying enough fuel and weapons to perform an effective mission. The ski jump is vital to operating Royal Navy Sea Harriers off the carriers that we have with our size. It's not as simple as just getting in the aircraft, kicking the tyres and lighting the fires and getting airborne. You've got a lot of things to consider. In particular, pilots must carefully calculate their end speed, the speed the aircraft is travelling when it hits the bottom of the ski jump. Air pressure, temperature, wind speed and aircraft weight are just some of the factors that need to be built into the calculation. Too fast and the sudden elevation of the ramp will seriously damage the aircraft's nose wheel. Okay, ready. To get it right, new pilots train in the simulator before joining the carrier. Then adjust your nozzle as required. You should be hover stop now. The simulator is quite a test, actually. Um, in fact, I find the simulator harder to fly than the real aircraft. I know I'm not going to die in the simulator, but uh, you can put to the point where you're under a lot of pressure. Operating aircraft to and from a carrier will always put pilots under pressure. But with ingenious ideas like the ski jump and the angled deck, Inspired designers have not only made the aviator's task easier, they've made it safer too. The ski jump shows how a single brilliant idea can redefine the boundaries of the possible. But only a handful of carriers have a ski jump. So, how do the rest get their aircraft off the deck and into 